Hello everyone and welcome to Gearock Farms. In today's video we are going to be working on my pickup truck, the 2004 Chevy 2500 HD. It's got the gas in it, the 6 liter gas, the Vortec, the big gasser. It's been a really nice truck for me, a, a pretty reliable truck. I don't put a whole lot of miles on it, but what I started on yesterday and we're going to finish this morning is some suspension work. For the past year it's had a kind of a squeaking noise as I'm turning or even going over dips and bumps sometimes and uh, I just uh, don't drive it enough to justify ripping into it but I had some time here this winter so I'm going to be taking it apart. So I started taking it apart yesterday and I started off by just working from the outside of the truck inward on both sides and I, I think I eliminated that it would be any of the ball joints on the arms here. Took off the tie rod ends too and moved all that and then took off the center of the tie rods and that didn't eliminate the squeaking but then once i took off my steering stabilizer then it stopped it's not springing back so that's a pretty good indicator that need to be replaced anyways along with uh, this joint right here is is really tight so hopefully that's where our squeaking was coming from it sucks that i had to work all the way from the outside edge to the inside of the truck but this should be a, a simpler replacement than a, a ball joint or something like that so i got a pile of, of parts i decided i'm going to do the steering stabilizer which is in that gray box and i figured uh why not do the rest of the shocks on the truck it probably needs it they're old hopefully this will help with the ride make it a bit more bearable to use it when it's not loaded so that's the plan start with that and then uh, I also got some electrical work to do in the cab. Hopefully that's some pretty minor stuff. I think I just have a bad connection in there. So, but let's get started here and get that steering stabilizer in and then move on to the shocks. The tapered end of this big bolt is what goes into the, the truck and the things. And then the end that's in the stabilizer here is just a cylinder shaped piece it calls for 35 foot pounds so it doesn't need a whole lot just leave that end loose Too bad you don't know how to grab tools. That'd be perfect, so I don't have to get in and out of here. Wanna grab me some tools? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I know what you guys are thinking. Got an impact with an impact socket, but then a chrome extension. What are you thinking? Well, I'm thinking I don't have all these impact extensions and all the right sockets maybe one day i will have it exactly what i need until now i'm just gonna keep taking chances and potentially breaking stuff okay i've been moving along i have everything done in the center now i have that stabilizer on and then the inner pivot points i guess you could call them i have those locked down and I think they're torqued to spec. Now I'm gonna do the outer ones here. And uh, before I even did that, I tried out the steering wheel and I don't hear any of that squeaking. So I'm thinking that stabilizer was what was causing that loud squeaking noise. So we're gonna throw these tie rod ends into the, the hub and I'm gonna throw some anti-seize on it as well because I don't plan on getting rid of this truck anytime soon. And I'll probably be the guy taking it apart. And I know what some guys are saying, well, that's kind of a greasable spot or whatever, but I don't think grease is getting way up in there. So I'm gonna throw some anti-seize on it just to be on the safe side, making my life easier when it comes time to take it out. Counter key in there, our counter pin. Oh, 
Now on to the other side here. Already got it started. But gonna take it out and put some axes on this one too. It looks like this side or the other side was already replaced once. I think it was this side. The side looks a little different. It doesn't look quite factory. It's good to know somebody was taking care of it before I got it. As you can tell, I'm very equipped for this project to have a full set of wrenches, you know, big and small. Okay, I think I have everything put together when it comes to the, the tie rods and all that stuff. Still no squeaking after uh, playing with the steering wheel. But before I go and put the tires back on and wrap everything up, I am going to uh, do the shocks in the front here right away. That should be pretty simple. Got this bolt up here or this nut to take off and we might end up just cutting that. And then we have that big guy down there which should come fairly easy. tension off. Look at all the shock left in that guy. <laughs> Update, we got the driver's side shock in. That actually went pretty smooth. Everything came apart nice other than that top guy. I had to cut him out, but that wasn't too hard. Now we're going to move over to the passenger side and uh, keep plugging away at this thing. shock number two on and that went really really smooth uh, now before I throw the tires back on I'm gonna grease all the the greasable joints and then I also bought some silicone spray to spray around some of the rubber grommets like these just to prevent any other squeaking noise and and keep everything lubricated I'm not sure if silicone's the right thing to use for that that silicone spray but that's what I'm gonna try and we'll see how that works Okay, we have the front end all buttoned together. We put on the tires, torqued everything down, got everything lubed up and greased. And then I started the truck, ran it with the power steering, cranked it one way, cranked it the other way, and uh, no squeaks so far. We got rid of that noise, which I'm super happy about. I'm gonna move on to the back. I gotta do the two shocks back there. I figured I'd put shocks in this thing all the way around, just get it over with. So uh, let's move on to the, the rear end of the truck. Okay, update. I got the one of the old shocks out. It's a good thing we pulled it out because there's no recoil at all. And it's super stiff. Like I can pull it out some, but yeah, I can feel it like catching itself in there. Good thing we're pulling it out and replacing it. Here's the new one. And they look like they're about the same size. So it should be good. Uh, bolts, we'll be able to reuse those. The one was a pain to get out. I had to put some uh, oil that crept into the threads to get it to come loose, but it eventually it came loose. So we're gonna put some anti-seize on these two, just because time to throw one back in and then we'll do the other side. So uh, back in action.
we go. Okay, I have the rear shocks in. It went pretty smooth once them that one uh, nut and bolt loosened up for me. And then it was uh, pretty much downhill running, which was great. Got everything all tightened up and situated under there. So I'm gonna clean up some of my tools. And then we're gonna take this thing for a bit of a test drive. Go grab some paint, uh, a nice brush to clean this thing. So then we can uh, wrap up that front end and uh, get it all painted up nice before we go and slap the, the rest of the shields on under there. Okay, we are off. So far, so good. Nothing fell apart quite yet. So it's made in voyage, went pretty good. Checked everything, nothing seems to be falling apart. I'm gonna give this thing a bath and then we're gonna paint some of the components up front that we had tore apart, being uh, everything's exposed somewhat now then we'll finish and put them shields back on them skid plates so let's get this thing all cleaned up Okay, I finished up with washing the truck and painting under the front end there when I had those panels off. Just put everything back on under there. All the skid plates and stuff, so that should be good to go now. I don't know if you guys seen it on the video when I was pressure washing, it was starting to, we were getting some flurries. There were some snowflakes falling and it, that's so weird because yesterday we had 50 degree temperatures and they said it was going to be like that this afternoon, but it's overcast and it was pretty cool there around lunchtime today. The middle of the day, it was it was getting colder as the morning went on. But now I can kind of feel it starting to warm back up again, which is nice. But we can't be too picky about the weather. It is the end of February while I'm filming this. I gotta be pretty happy that I can roll around on the ground in my own driveway, not have to be in the nice heated shop in the middle of winter like this and still get something done. And I know some of you are probably wondering why I don't take this to the farm shop I just wanted to tackle it quick here at my house. Then it didn't need to clog up space at the farm. Now that the suspension's done, cleaning and painting and all, and all that's buttoned up, there's one thing in the cab I gotta do. Uh, those of you that maybe have this truck, it's a common issue, I'm not for sure, but there's a plug for the HVAC system under the passenger's uh, feet area in there that you gotta wiggle that whole plug to get it to uh, connect power sometimes to get the blowers to go. So I'm gonna dielectric grease that Maybe, well, maybe pull the plug apart and see if a, a pin's falling apart or sliding out or a prong is broke or what's going on there. But more than likely, I'm probably just going to coat the plug with dielectric grease, shove it back up in there, help make a, a nice, nice solid connection. Instead of just talking about it, I'll show you guys. It's this guy right here. Yeah, there's a wire that's corroding there. And there we go. Just take a closer look and we can figure out what's going on. Maybe we'll be stripping a wire back here. There's one all green and corroded. He got hot too. Uh oh, that's not good. Wonder what's going on there. The wire actually seems better. It looked pretty bad. Now that I pulled the tape away, it, it seems pretty solid. 
you know, like I'm not gonna be able to yank it out of there. I think if, uh, if I'm gonna do something here, I'm gonna order the whole plug and redo the whole thing. Being that uh, it did get hot and melted part of this at one point in time. So that's, uh, that's gonna be put on hold, I'm guessing, until we get a plug. But at least we can uh, tape it up a little nicer and still throw a little dielectric in there to help make that connection. I'm surprised it would get hot enough to melt something. This truck's new enough where stuff is fused up. I've never smelt it get hot on me, so it makes me think that maybe something was replaced here, being there it was electrical taped. So maybe that wire did go bad for that guy. And this is his splice, his new wire in here. Now leave comments down below. I've heard mixed uh, opinions about dielectric grease on plugs like this. Some guys say it's a great idea, other guys say it's a bad idea, being you could like cross up connections. Now let's turn everything on and, and see if it affected anything. Pulled this out, two little screws, and look what's going on in there. A little circuit board type dealio. Yeah, looking in here, it looks like all of our prongs are okay. Maybe this guy's just going bad. Okay, so I pulled the old one out, and I just ran quick and got a new one. I'm pretty sure that's what's going on. It's something up in here in this resistor. Uh, the technical term for this is a, a blower fan resistor. So hopefully this up in here was the problem. I'm pretty confident that our plug was getting it power. It would make sense that our plug would have got hot at a point in time because maybe something up in here failed because half of the functions on the dial didn't work. So, uh... I guess let's just figure it out here and plug everything in and uh, then we'll know for sure if this was the problem or not. Well awesome that was a simple fix. I didn't know that that resistor itself controlled the speeds of the fan, it makes sense now, pulling everything apart, but I had no idea. I figured when I was playing with that plug, that was just, you know, on or off, sending hot power to everything. And that when it came to the fan control, the speed control, that was somewhere else. And that had its own issues, but it's, it's all just that piece, which is great. And uh, this is a good example of it pays to call around when you're buying parts. I called two different parts stores local to my house and the one was like $20 more than this one and they both are pretty much the same brand parts so uh, happy with that happy that I was able to call around got uh, a new part here within uh, you know 10 minutes or less essentially so I'm gonna slap that thing back in and then uh, we'll try it one more time while we and to be honest, for uh, essentially a work truck, uh, the AC and the heat have worked really, really well. The only issue I've had with the HVAC was the fan. And to be honest, like I'm happy if I have defrost in a vehicle like this. You know, like I did, definitely did not expect it to have great heat and AC for the the year or the price that I paid or the, just the stigma of being a, a farm truck, work truck, if you guys catch my, catch my drift, but. All right, let's try it again. And there you have it. We are done working on my pickup for the day. I'm happy with how everything has gone. It took a little longer than expected, but that seems to be every uh, fixing, working on stuff kind of repair jobs. They all seem to take a bit longer than planned. 
If you guys didn't see it when I was going down the road, this truck has about 151,000-ish miles on it. Hopefully I'm able to make it last another 100,000 miles. But like I was saying, I don't drive it a whole lot, so the thing will probably rust out before it'll have a major breakdown where it won't be worth fixing it. To give you guys a bit of a history behind this truck, I've had it for four years now, three and a half, four years, and uh, I've been really happy with it. I've been a lot of places with this truck. River has been riding in the back of this truck. She's been riding in the cab. I've had a lot of good memories in this truck. And it's overall been really reliable for me. The only major issue that I had, or it could have been a major issue, was under the hood, on the back of the motor, there's a ground cable. And uh, thankfully we have the internet and I was able to diagnose it and learn from other people's mistakes on the internet because it shows like reduce engine power, and throws a bunch of voltage codes in the cab and a lot of people have replaced a lot more parts than they needed to in order to solve that problem when it's just like a little i think it was like a 10 gauge wire just a tiny wire on the back of the the engine grounding the engine is all that wire was doing it's just a bad ground and it's in a tiny ground too not like a big ground cable i seen online a lot of people are throwing ecms at this truck big you know replacing all the big ground cables and batteries and alternators and just just a in a world of hurt when it came to that that voltage code and it and it kills the truck it shuts the engine right off it uh it really confuses the truck so when it acted up on me i was pretty worried i was like wow man maybe this this truck is gonna have preemptive problems maybe this is it for the truck maybe maybe i won't be able to get this fixed without a new motor or something like that or it's going to be a nightmare of a wiring harness nope just a tiny little wire that's the only time this truck's ever left me stranded and don't get me wrong it's not perfect it's an old truck it got new brake lines uh, a year and a half ago new brakes in the front the, in the rear the the parking brake uh, like the emergency brake I have that disconnected because that's all rusted up but the normal brakes work and it's got some rust the rockers are uh, starting to go but they're not terrible yet it's just the underside right now the frame was pretty rusty when I got it or at least it you know it, it looked rusty there's a lot of surface rust but me and my friends put a, a product it was like a chassis saver I think it was called just like a, a black, really aggressive tar almost that you could put right over the top of rust. And it, it's done a pretty good job. I'm happy with how my frame looks. It's uh, nice and black. And then just like today, working on those suspension components, I tried to go around and, and you know hit it with a black rattle can on any of those those bare parts that I ever would put on this truck. I threw some speakers in it when I first got it because the ones were, that were in it were starting to go out. Otherwise, I don't think I've done any anything else to this truck. It's been a pretty simple, reliable truck. But being that I'm talking to you guys, I have some questions or some things I want to do to this. Uh, as you can see, it these, uh, these tires or just these fenders aren't enough. It throws a lot of mud up on the side of the truck, especially driving along on gravel roads. So I was wondering if if you guys got any recommendations for some kind of mud flap that comes out a little further for these pickups and uh, maybe something for the back as well. I was debating putting some tow mirrors on this even though I don't do a lot of towing currently with it. And then I'm also debating getting a ball for the bed of this truck so I can tow a gooseneck trailer if I need to. So if you guys have any recommendations for those things, mud flaps or a ball for the, the bed of your truck to pull a gooseneck, uh, let me know down below in the comments. I'd, I'd be really interested to know what you guys uh, recommend. Another thing that I'm shopping for, and I've been doing a lot of research trying to look for uh, guys' service truck setup or service bed setup. You know, obviously it'd be ideal if, if a guy could just throw a service bed on a pickup, but I don't do enough with it to justify that yet. But I would like to make like a service pallet, if you want to call it that, where I could have a pallet with a toolbox and, and stuff like that on it, or even like a, a fuel tank toolbox combo, an auxiliary fuel tank and a toolbox. That would be one of the nice things that I'd like to add to this truck. Obviously get something universal, so if I ever needed to switch it to another truck, I could. So you guys let me know down in the comments 
what type of auxiliary fuel tanks you guys like using for your pickup beds uh, along with a, a toolbox combo or if you like just buying the two individually let me know what brands you've had luck with i don't want to get too cheap of a tank where it starts to leak at the seams you know where they welded it especially here as i start finding some more crop ground to uh, kind of crop on the side along with the family farm it, it'd be nice to have an auxiliary fuel tank on the farm because we all know the way farming's getting uh, you can't farm right next door to your home farm. You, you got to do some traveling if you want to get some ground. So I want to be prepared for that. So leave some comments about the mud flaps, the gooseneck ball, and then uh, a fuel tank uh, toolbox combo for the bed of this thing. That is going to be it for the video. Let me know what you thought of the truck. Let me know what you thought of the video. A little different than our normal farming videos. Also, let me know in the comments what kind of vehicle you have. I'd be interested to know, especially when it comes to farm or work pickups, which uh, brand or type of pickup do you rely on for work. Thank you all for watching, and we will see you next time.